Metcalf played the lovable Dr. Carter on ER. He currently stars in the hit TNT movie series, The Librarian. Take a look. Your sword grip and tactics show me that you're fighting with a German 14th century sword style developed by Johannes Lichtenauer. Defeated only by the Renaissance technique taught by Hutton in 1892. What's the other thing you know? The Renaissance style taught by Hutton in Since your birthday party. Since my and before that, we used to see each other a lot. We, we used to be in, neighbors. Yeah. We were neighbors. You Miss still you. there? No, I'm still there. I love it there. It's pretty. Out in the, we had a, a ranch near near Noah and uh, lots in an of, undisclosed location. Lots of yeah, and, and a lot of animals and stuff. And you, animals? Tons still. Still. Tons, yeah. Wow. Yeah, you had a lot of animals before. Well, when you're named Noah. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> you have no choice. Goes with the territory. Uh, you, this is your first time here on this set, but it probably yes no. feels like home. Yes and no. This used to be one of the ER stages. This was the operating floor. I took out Dr. Benton's appendix right over there. <laughs> Had my kidney taken out right over there after my stabbing. Good times. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we took over... Uh, Love what you've done with the place. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. It's weird to think that there are so many different... Uh, well, this stage actually has a lot of history to it. This was Betty Davis's stage. Her offices were... Her dressing room was where George's office is, just across the way. Uh-huh. And this was the very first air-conditioned stage. She demanded that it be frigid, which is why you're all so comfortable today. Uh-huh. Well, the other stages have air conditioning now, now they I'm do, sure. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, well, that's very necessary, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, this is, uh, this is hallowed ground right here. Yeah, that's great. It must be... And you're shooting at ER right now, right? I just went back to work yesterday, yeah. That's, How's that? Uh, It's like... Uh, Wait, you did it for how long? I did it for 11 years. 11 years, and then yeah. it's been... Um, it's been four years since I worked on that set. Is it just kind of like stepping back into it? Is it easy? It's like uh, it's like going to your closet and finding your favorite pair of jeans from high school and thinking, that's never going to fit me. And then you put it on and go, woohoo! Hey, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh, it's remarkably comfortable. It was uh, like going to high school reunion, family reunion. It's um, very rich, very... You know, lots of emotions. Yeah, I was going to say, it's an emotional Well, it's for bittersweet. You, so. This is the final season for the show. This uh. 15 years it's been on. So all these people have been, you know, working away, two sound stages away for, since the late 20th century. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, boy, what a, what a cast, though, that's come out of that. And you and, and George Clooney, obviously. Uh, yeah, whatever happened to him? I don't know. I have not seen him, so I don't think much, because uh, we cannot... Uh, well, you're going about this all wrong, you know. Well, wait a minute. Let's talk about that picture first. Yeah. Let's talk about... Yeah, that was an interesting look. Where were you going? <laughs> I believe that's the Golden Gloves, judging from my bloodshot eyes, because they have an open bar at that award ceremony. Right, morning. right. Now, let's talk about how sweet, uh, George, the first season, uh, what he did for you. You went, you went wild with your paycheck. Well, we shot the pilot, and we didn't really think it was going to go very far, but we decided, George and Eric LaSalle and I decided to take a trip to Europe uh, while we waited to see if the show was going to get picked up, and I spent all the money I'd made on the pilot on that trip, so we came back and I realized I still had to pay my rent, so George covered me for a few months until the paychecks started coming in, the first check I wrote after I got paid was to pay George Bank. Wow, that's, yeah. that's a sweet guy, George. He's that kind of guy. He is that kind of guy. Now, how can we get him? <laughs> So yesterday, Brad yeah. Pitt uh, told us to get uh, Chippendale dancers, that we were going about it all wrong with women. We should get Chippendale dancers. Women, it's like trying to tempt Santa Claus with elves, you know. It's oh, like, you know, yeah. He sees it all the time. It's a waste of time. you got to give him something that he hasn't seen for a while. So what do you think? Honestly, knowing him, if you could get the 1975 Cincinnati Reds to come by his office, <laughs> get Joe Morgan and Johnny Bench and Tug McGraw, you'll have him. You'll have him. I Is one you. a blonde? Because Brad thinks we need a blonde. <laughs> I don't think any of those players are blonde anymore. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, so we should get the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah. 1975. Yeah. Circa 75, anywhere in there. That okay. was when he was a big Cincinnati Reds fan. Really? The big red machine. A lot of baseball fans I see in the audience yeah. today. Yeah. Right. Well, there are. <laughs> all right, if
explain uh, the library, and that looks like a lot of fun and challenging that you learned fencing. Well, I was a producer on this, which means that you can tailor the script around the skills you already possess uh -huh. and not have to learn too many new ones. Uh -huh. I fenced in high school, and, uh, and for budgetary reasons, there was a big car chase we were going to do, and they said, well, we can't afford that. We went, right. Sword fight? Sure, why not? Uh, they're the most that looks fun. fun to do. To it's so much fun. Yeah. It's so much. It's it, in many ways the reason I became an actor in the first place is I wanted to be a swashbuckler and I wanted to, you know, kiss the girl and I wanted to tell the joke and I wanted to do a pratfall and spit mm -hmm. take and I got to do all of that in this movie. Yeah. All of it. And so, well, explain the librarian. You, you are a. Right. The librarian is this. Um, Flynn Carson is a professional academic. He has 22 PhDs, but has never really had a job or a girlfriend. He's just recently moved out of his mother's house. Uh, and he gets selected to be the keeper of all these mystical and magical artifacts from history, which are kept in a subterranean library underneath the New York Metropolitan Library. And his job is to go around the world and find these relics before they fall into the hands of evildoers that would use them for ill. So it's like Indiana yeah. Jones if Indiana yeah. Jones was played right. by Don Knotts. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Well, I love seeing you, and uh, I'll come visit you. I'm gonna Please come do. Visit you. I, I miss you and the miss wife and the kids. And you have to. Uh, I see your mom all the time. We have dinner up there every once in a while. She doesn't live there. What is she doing up there? She goes to the Italian place. She still goes up there. She does. Yeah. Never lets me know what she does. Uh, you can catch the librarian Curse of the Judas Chalice Sunday at eight o'clock on TNT. We'll be right.